Welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build yourself a space shuttle. Without further ado, let's investigate how you go about this. And this is actually kind of basic for once. First off, the launch pad is going to use light grey concrete, and then some of the shuttle main blocks. All these should be relatively easy to get, the only difficult thing should be the frog legs. Of course, you can use glowstone if need be. And then, the main part of this build, the fire gradient. I'm not going to build this landed, because, well, that's pretty simple. You only need really a picture for that one. So, here is a giant gradient you can use for fire. Of course, we have the actual concrete for the very thick parts, while the outer flames can go white to red, and then the smoke, which is black to light gray. No white, though, because, of course, that was already used. And then this build, all in all, is pretty easy. However, if you're building it in the air, it will become much harder, medium tier, because the fire. With all that in mind, find a good area for your launch pad, whether it be near something industrial or out in the open. It doesn't really matter, all you need is a large square, maybe about 21 by 21. Here, I have a very basic launch pad. You can see the middle is made out of copper grates because of something called heat tunnels or heat trenches, or whatever you want to really call them. Anyways, what happens when you launch a rocket is all the heat has to go somewhere, and typically that will ruin the nearby area. If you accidentally left some equipment nearby, say goodbye to it because it's going to be blown away and also melted. So you need a way to disperse the heat safely, hence there's always a trench under them. One time they didn't do that, and what do you know? The landing pad was damaged. Well, this is a launch pad, but still. Essentially, Keep these grates here until you build the rocket itself. But, since we need a rocket in order to continue that part, well, you're going to have to build the main parts real quick. So, start off by making a circle. You can use a circle generator in the description below. And, it's up to you about the shape of it. You can make it a bit larger, maybe not even make it fit on here if it's really high in the sky. And then, you'll need your space shuttle capsule thing, which will be taped to the back here, like this. So mark it, and then you'll need two more boosters on either side. And then, once you have this done, you'll want to start creating your thrusters. And remember, the middle one should be taller. Here, I've made suspiciously creeper-shaped holes for thrusters. Not the main one, that we used a little bit later. But now, you want to move it into the sky if it's already in takeoff. Otherwise, you'll need a little tower nearby in order to hold it up so it doesn't fall into those holes. But since this is more about the shuttle itself, I'll be skipping that. In here, I have a very basic shape for it. It could be a little bit taller, but essentially what you want to do is go as tall as you want, and then when you want it to round off, you want to shrink it every two blocks like this, until you reach a point right here. And here's where it gets a little complicated. You're going to have to do a layer like this, and then you're going to have to smooth it out. Because remember, the rocket top is not a cone. It's not piercing through the atmosphere. So you need to do some basic smoothing. Of course, this might not be perfect right now. But as you do it, you should progressively be getting a different shape out of it. Like how this side, it looks a little bit smoother, although it's not the best. But essentially, you should be going for that more ellipsis cone shape rather than a solid point because when you have it like this, it looks really amateur. You can go either between orange terracotta or orange concrete. Although terracotta might be more realistic, concrete usually looks better, so it's up to you on that one. Right here, you can see I now have the rocket itself, and it looks pretty good. I now have that rounded stuff at the top and a band of white terracotta. The terracotta instead of concrete is to make sure it doesn't look too sleek and blends in with the orange a bit better. Although you could use something like yellow concrete, I've seen that used before, so I prefer white terracotta for this. And now, it's time for the side thrusters. And here's the thing about them. One, they need to be a little bit lower than the central rocket. They should only be going up to roughly this band here. And then, they actually fall off after a while because they're extra weight and you have to discard them, otherwise your rocket might not make it through the atmosphere. Which means you might want to move them one block away. If you put them here, then you could put little grey concrete things in between to make it look like 
there's little cables attaching them. And then after a while, they can be easily detached in order to drop the empty thruster, preferably somewhere into the ocean. Hence, that's why a lot of rocket launchers are actually done near the sea. Right here, you can see I now have one of the side thrusters. But there's something missing about it. Of course, we have the connecting things, so that way it can fall off. Turns out this orange thing I thought was a giant rocket, should probably do a little bit more research before starting videos, is actually a giant fuel tank, which means it needs a rounded bottom. So, yeah, all the fire actually comes out of these two on the sides, which is kind of funny, along with the actual orbiter itself, which will be built in later. Now, there's a bit of a problem here. It's kind of flat. Of course, we can't really add much detail because that's concrete right there and there's no stairs and such for that, not to mention it's unrealistic. But for here, we can make it look a little bit better. We can use stairs like this. Some upside down stairs right before the gray concrete layers, although it might look a little silly at first, it kind of grows on you. So something like this, build a couple of times over and now it looks like it's, you know, a bit more interesting. If that doesn't work, then just incorporate the quartz normally, which I think I might do since if you have a rocket like this, it's kind of thin and it loses too much mass with those stairs there. I mean, look at how thin that point is right there. So maybe just use quartz, but essentially make it look less flat through texturing or other means. With thrusters on either side, making sure that the fires are below the fuel tank, it's now time for the orbiter. Of course, you do need some frog lights here and some glass, so that way it's all nicely lit up. But now, the orbiter itself. This is not going to have an interior for space constraints unless you're building a giant one of these. If you're doing that, then make sure that these side thrusters are rounded. But essentially what you want to be doing is making what basically is another thruster here. And when you go up, well, leave it completely solid. You can have an interior if you make it larger, but I generally consider it not worth the time since one, it's typically an aerial structure, and two, there really isn't much inside. It's very utilitarian and there's very little you can actually cram into there. The important things to note are one, the front has to end in a point, and two, needs a window. So something like this with black concrete behind to make it look like there's an interior works well. Along with that, the bottom and the front are gray, so keep that in mind. Make the gray smoothen out, and then more white concrete. Feel free to make it not completely 3x3. Three three. In fact, you might want to make it 3x4, with this side being taller in order to fit more. Of course, you also do need the fins. But I think it's generally okay to make this piece a bit larger than the other pieces, since it's more important and generally one of the focal points of the build along with the fuel tank. Here, I have the finished space shuttle itself. You can see I have that window at the top, a black concrete behind it. Did some of the quartz wiring and then applied it partially to the thrusters, so that way they don't look too thin, but they're also not completely flat. And then, what you need to do is add wings. I start off by doing a weird number step, where I go 2, 3, 2, and then I go out, and then I smoothen it at the bottom where these thrusters will be. And the reason why I do that specifically is so that way it enunciates the wings when they start, rather than them being plastered on. Then on the wings, put down some insignias. I put, of course, a low poly version of my logo, and then a blue cube. Yeah, it kind of looks like NASA, so close enough. And then, right here, I have another one, but you can see the issue. With this one, I have all these nice and rounded, but these ones, I did some very generic stuff and it looks very generic. Which means, yeah, you should try smoothening them out more and making sure that you have gray concrete within the metal itself. Otherwise, this part of the build is done. Although it looks a little silly at times, still, if you add something like an orange terracotta band here and there, still, it looks really good. And then, we'll work on the fire. The fire is a little different for these two, because those ones get bright orange flames with the giant gradient I put down there, but the actual orbiter itself does actually provide some propulsion, but it makes blue fire strangely enough, so be sure to get out a blue gradient for this one. Right here, you can see I have some very basic blue fire, 
sea lantern in there, then white glass with another one for the back or front thruster. The side ones doesn't really fit as well. And then white blue, cyan, blue. And then two blocks gap and more blue. Sometimes you can't see the blue fire at all in certain angles from the rocket. So you have to improvise a little and assume what it would look like. However, it might actually just be invisible and this might be erroneous, but still looks cool, so whatever. Now, this wing has also been pointed, nothing really cool to say, and now it's time for our work on the big flames. Right here, you can see it's relatively simple. I start off with the yellow, and then I go lower, make it orange, and then red. What you want to do is make it angle outward, like this, following my cursor. And then you have the spiky on the bottom, and then you go right back in. And you can see how this already looks quite good. And then something else you really, really need to account for, because this can really mess up your build if you don't do it right. Set it to nighttime. Is it lit up? If it's not lit up, nobody's going to take your fire seriously. So make sure to hide random pieces of frog lights or shroom lights. Personally, I'd say frog lights work for the yellow sections and shroom lights work for the red and orange sections, but it's up to you on what you really want to do. But from here, we need to incorporate the glass itself. And that's why I set up this gradient down here, where you have the big flames here, and then around it, you incorporate the glass. And then after all the red, you can even do some smoke. You know, it wouldn't be completed without the smoke. And something else with all this, You'd put smoke on the landing pad when you're done with the rocket to make it look like it just recently blasted off. Right here, I now have one of these half done. Of course, you can always polish up various pieces, but this is generally what it looks like. You start off with your generic fire gradient that's admittedly very basic, then you layer it with glass. So, start off by having your white. Of course, don't use white on white unless, you know, you actually just make a logical decision like me right now. Hooray, now I can actually use proper colors here. So you start off with white, and then after you do white, you go to yellow, and have some of the white leak onto the yellow, and then have the yellow leak onto the orange, and the orange leak onto the red, and then red concrete leak into the red glass. And now you have a flame. And then, when you look at it from afar, it looks really good. Make sure if you have like structure gel or any other world edit tool, don't copy the flame, all right? You can copy the concrete parts, but don't copy the flame itself because people are going to pick up on that very easily. Even if you mirror it or something, just don't do it. Although you could technically replicate it with integrity functions, that's a little advanced. So I just recommend building it twice. After that, we'll be adding the smoke have a few blocks here and there in the air, have it all over here, even some down into this heat sink, and then the build will be finished. Right here, my fires are almost finished. The problem is right now is that the concrete thing under them is still intact. Make sure to punch holes into it from time to time. Also, make sure that your insides are solid. If you did something like this, well, nope, that's not going to work. You're going to have to make it completely solid. Of course I missed a block here, but still, you're going to have to make them look less like each other. That way, they look more realistic. Afterwards, what you need to do is add the smoke. And the smoke is a bit interesting, because it's essentially just an extension of the fire. Of course, you need it to spread out more, and then also be on the launch pad. Either way, there isn't too much else to say besides have scattered red blocks within the ending glass like this. And then, towards the bottom of it, start mixing in some of your black. And then, go to your gray, light gray. Don't go to white, you don't need to go that far, and especially since that's right closer to water vapor than anything. And then, once you have all that, your build will be finished. Starting off with our smoke, I just have a little on the launch pad. It's not terribly complex, it's not amazing or anything, but it gets the job done. So there's not really much else to be said. And now... We have the stuff that all the budget went to. The smoke up here. You can see how it leans a little to the left over here because of course wind. And then we have the rocket thrusters, all the fire. Of course the actual fire structure is a little damaged to make it look like an actual flame. Make sure to take off certain parts 
in case it's a little too flat at points, because otherwise it'll look built rather than made. And now you have yourself a rocket. In case you're watching this far and trying to build another type of rocket, say this is for inspiration, well, the Apollo 11 rocket. I mean, look at today's date, it's the anniversary for it, so that's why I actually built this. Well, you can make one of these side thrusters and basically make it the whole thing. Of course, the top is detachable. So now, you have yourself a rocket. Not much else to say besides, well, look at those flames. It's certainly something nice to add to your builds. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day. Your saw out. <laughs>